Okay, well today we're going to do a quick project. It's going to be making a bottle for a bottle pour, but this one's going to be real easy with very minimal tools. I know on the one that I used uh, with the Artist Loft bottle, the plastic's really thick. You got to have, or you should have some, you know, more power tools to make it up. But today we're going to do it just a water bottle. Now this one, they're available everywhere. So we're just going to have the bottle, a knife, and a glue gun. Now I'm also going to use the cap to a uh, paint tube uh, to give it the depth. You could use the lid off of the bottle, but they're so thin they don't really give it the elevation. And I think the elevation is necessary for the effect that I get anyway, which what inspired me to make this type of bottle was watching the paint as it ran off of the canvas and onto the table, all the cool little designs it made, and I thought to myself, why can't I get that look on canvas? And that's essentially what I was trying to come up with with the bottle pour. So let's get started and get her done. So we're going to take the bottle, like you see here, an X-Acto knife, craft knife, whatever you want to call it, and we're going to cut the bottle. On this one, you've got all these little ridges. I'm going to go about three ridges up. Now you could go taller. I recommend against it because the last thing you want is to make it kind of top heavy where it falls over on your canvas. And that should be about right. So it's real simple that all you got to do is bring it around about once like that. And we have the base of it. Now, I think for this one, four holes is all we're going to need. I want to put two on either side. You just kind of stick the edge in and twirl it around a time or two until it penetrates. And that was a little bit more than what I wanted, but we'll still make it work. Now what I found works really good for the size of the hole on this, wood skewers. If you can fit that through it, that's just about right to control the paint. Now I've got the hole started there. We'll come back and we'll get that hollowed out a little bit more in a minute. And let's try with this one and I'll try not to push through too early on it. But make no promises. If there's a way to mess it up, I find it. Okay. Oh, that's... Okay, so we have a hole here, a hole here. Let's go directly across, put one here and one here. Try not to poke yourself in the finger because these little exacto knives are just like razor blades. They will cut you. So I've heard, of course, I've never done that except, you know, every time I touch one, but uh, we'll try not to do it today. And I'm hoping we're getting this all on camera here. Okay. And you'll probably need to go back and just kind of clean it out a little bit. Let's take the wood skewer, stick it up there through the little hole I made, and now just kind of take your little craft knife and cut around it. So I guess that's another supply that I didn't mention is, you know, having a craft, uh, you know, a little skewer stick's always a good thing to have in the craft room anyway. There, that's got that one. You see there? And there's the other one. I'm not wearing my glasses, so I can't see anything. So, you know, if you see me cut my finger off, please holler at me so that I know. Alright, that's got two of them that I can kind of sort of see. And let's go here. Try not to poke myself in the eye. Oh yeah, that's how it's supposed to work. And there's the other one.
Now, I don't know if those holes are visible for you. They're not exactly round. They don't really have to be. But, you know, you don't want to make them too large or too small. Too small and the paint doesn't really flow through them very well. Too large and you get way too much paint, obviously. Um, but I think those are going to work pretty well. Put the cap on this knife so I don't find it accidentally here in a minute. Now, like I said, rather than using like the cap that comes with this, I am taking the cap from a tube of paint and I'm going to hot glue it right onto here. And that might actually be a hair big, the paint. You don't want the paint to drag along the side of that. What else have I got here? I could use that. That's too big. Well, you know what? We're just going to try this. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I'm going to adjust the camera real quick. Right down here, because you can see so much in this mess I've got down here. It's about time to pull some uh, paint droppings and make some jewelry, but I just haven't been doing much of that lately. But I've got... I've got it to make lots once I get started. Bring that around like that. All right, and let's take this cap and kind of situate it there. And I think that's going to just about do it. Looks pretty good to me. What do you say we take it and give it a trial run? Give it its first time through, see what happens. Y'all want to do that? Let's check it out. Let's see if we can get this where it's... Okay, you really have to look and see where the holes are the first time you use it. I've got one there and one there, one there. So I'm going to put this right here and maybe bring it up just a little bit. I'm going to try to give you the best view of it. And you got to kind of wish me the best this time because I didn't get my holes exactly right. But I'm going to use colors I have on hand. Some of my favorites. Now, I like to spread a little bit of my base color out first because, as you know, if you've done much flow painting, it's good to have some moisture on a canvas to help the paint flow. Now, it's not necessary. It will also flow without it, and it flows pretty good without it, but I like it to move a little quicker. So I didn't give much thought in color scheme. Now, those of you who watch many of my videos know that I don't hardly ever talk on the videos because quite frankly, in my opinion, it's usually not necessary. This paint process in itself is just so visually mesmerizing, you really don't need to hear my words. But anyway, let's get started on this. And let's start off with some aqua green and see how that comes out. Ooh, I like it. On top of that, let's see. A touch of yellow. On top of the yellow. And then on top of that, maybe a little bit of black. And also, you want to check it the first time and see how it's doing. Yeah, you see how the one here is actually going down along that cap, which is not ideal, but it could give us an interesting effect. We're just going to keep watching it and see what it does. All right. Let's put some more aqua in it. Some more black. Some more yellow. Some more copper. And on top of that copper, let's throw a little bit of bronze and follow that up with some crimson red just for a highlight. Now, let's go back to a little more aqua green. And into that aqua green, let's throw a bit of the hooker green and a touch of the yellow green. And 
let's start tilting and see what it does. I want it to start going this way. Now, if you tilt it like this, you'll see that you get those little drips coming down. Once again, going back to the way the drips look on the canvas. Now this one, I guess the holes are a little bit small, and with them being right up against that pedestal, or that cap I'm using as a pedestal, it's not giving me the exact effect I want, but it's a different effect, and it's interesting. Let's throw a little more yellow. Uh, I don't want you to go off of there. So I'm going to put you over here, and let it kind of flow back the other way, and see if we can get this yellow to kind of drip off as it goes back. And on top of that yellow, a taste of the copper. Yellow, copper, and black to me is just an amazing combination. And especially when you throw in a little bit of aqua green. And then throw, follow that aqua green up with just a touch of the deep green. But when it comes to colors, I'm sure you have your own personal favorites. This is one of mine. All right. Well, I'm not getting exactly the effect I want, although it's really not bad. We're going to start going back the other way now. And let's go back to our aqua. And maybe a touch of yellow green on top of that aqua. Black. I think it definitely needs a little more yellow and it. it needs to brighten up some. And let's just throw in a touch of white just to be different. And then let's put in some of that crimson red on top of that. Let's move our little cap that way. Send it back the other way. Well, I gotta say, I'm fairly pleased with the outcome. I hope you've enjoyed uh, watching it as well. And maybe you'll try your own bottle. If you do, please share results with me. I'd love to see them. And if you get a chance, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and take a look around the channel. I've got a lot of videos here to watch. Thanks for watching. Faux Paw Art.